Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday so we are talking turnips. I'm super cash in my sweatshirt because it's freezing in our house right now. Anyways, so before I jump into today's topic, I wanted to look back on some of the comments that you guys left on my last Turner Syndrome video, which was about even more coexisting conditions or complications that come from Turner Syndrome. So Lisa said, I never knew RLS could be related to Turner's at all. I've dealt with it since I was little. The overweight thing is an issue for me as well. I've never been able to reach normal on that. My regular doctor always says my height, I should be around 100, it says with my height, I should be around 110 to 120. If I'm over 125, she tends to get on me about losing weight. I know from watching your videos, you have struggled with it as well. I really think when it comes to turners and being on this side of the spectrum, we will never reach the ideal weight. So we should try to find and maintain a healthy weight for us and our bodies. And I bring that up more in case there's a young girl out there watching who thinks she has to reach that ideal weight or under to look good or be happy with their body because that's what st statistics say we should be. Absolutely. I, I used to, when I was little, I used to be on a skinny side, honestly, until I was like 10, maybe 11. And then I started more not being just kind of fluffy. I was gaining weight on a pretty consistent level. And I've kind of just struggled with it ever since. And my weight has gone like that ever since. And it's really, really difficult. And I completely agree with you need to find what's good for you. And health needs to be the motivation over anything else. I got this because I wanted to track my steps and see what I was doing. I wanted to track how many calories I was burning. I wanted to have some kind of tool to know physically active wise how I was doing. And it shows you a lot when you have that accountability right there on your wrist, like you've been sitting for too long and it goes off. Or you check how many steps you got in and you are way less than you expected. And you realize how intentional it takes being to get to there and, and to hit a certain level. And I think everybody has to find that level for themselves. And having the hormonal side to it is kind of just another thing that you have to fight against. So hormone balance is super important for being able to just maintain a healthy weight in general, whether it's you're trying to keep your weight down to a healthy weight or whether you're trying to gain weight to a healthy weight. Hormone balance can throw that off and make it so, so difficult. I know it is extremely difficult for me to lose weight when I've been bad with my pills, no matter what I'm doing. And yeah. So that's a really great point. Running Bear said, you stole my video topics. Laugh out loud, I was about to create a video about coffee and anxiety. Yes, it's super connected. It just caffeine in general really does it, but coffee specifically, is probably the most concentrated caffeine you're gonna have. And so the more you have that adrenaline boost, it gives you that energy that it gives you feeds your mind going, which if you're an anxious person, not a fun thing. So it's definitely connected. <laughs> Laura said, I've only just came across your channel and I'm so glad I did. I can relate so much to what you're saying in this video. I also have Turner's, but I don't really talk about it to anyone really. Not that I'm embarrassed about it, but because I've got very few symptoms, but because it just feels like a lot of people don't understand and it just reminds you of the reality of what you're going to go have to go through to try and have a baby. I never knew RLS, restless leg syndrome, was related to Turner's, but I've also struggled with my weight and have struggled with the fact that I'll probably never gain my ideal body. So thank you for talking about it. Yeah, um, I'm super glad you found my channel too. Thank you. And I completely agree. It, it just becomes a almost even more alienating thing when it's something that is almost doubly they can't understand it. For me, I have Turner's and everything that comes with along with the infertility that very few people around me could even really imagine. And that makes it difficult. That's a double fold of such key points of who you are that you you just have no way of being able to completely express or explain to them to where they could fully understand it. And I think that's why it's amazing to have that 
community and absolutely keep talking about it even if you don't have very many symptoms because I really honestly don't and I've started my channel kind of based off of just sharing my experiences. Okay, so for today's topic, I wanted to talk about something that I got a question about the other day a couple weeks ago. It was on the term gonadal dysgenesis and kind of what that actually is, what that means, and how is it connected to Turner's. So in typing gonadal dysgenesis into Google, you come up with a lot of different results. Nothing that really says anything different than the others. They're all kind of explaining the same thing, but the more of it you read, the better of a picture you get of how it plays into Turner syndrome. So I specifically have gotten this question in connection to infertility, and I'll share the definition I found of gonadal dysgenesis in a second, but the connection is under infertility, and it's specifically the formation or the development of the whole reproductive system. So the gonads are the preformed yet to be determined what they'll turn into. I'm not sure what to call them before that point, but they either turn into testes for guys and they drop or they turn into ovaries for women. And obviously if you're a woman or really anybody that understands the reproductive systems, you know that's a huge part of the reproductive system. A huge, huge part. And part of Turner's is the reproductive system is damaged. It's either underdeveloped, um, not sustainable enough and ends up failing. So it's called premature ovarian failure, which basically means it shut down for business early. I like to explain it that way because that kind of shows people how permanent it really is. Like there, there's, there's nothing, nothing to do. Anyways. <laughs> so gonadal dysgenesis, I found a few different things on it. And at first I kept just seeing connections to Turner's. Like I kept seeing also known as Turner syndrome. But the more I read what gonadal dysgenesis is actually described as, it's really just that piece of Turner syndrome. It's not the whole thing. I, I can also see how it would affect the other things that Turner syndrome can affect also. So the definitions that I found beyond the also called Turner syndrome or Turner syndrome also called gonadal dysgenesis was gonadal dysgenesis is any congenital developmental disorder of the reproductive system characterized by a progressive loss of germ cells on the developing gonads of an embryo. This loss leads to extremely hypoplastic, which means underdeveloped, and dysfunctioning gonads mainly composed of fibrous tissue, hence the name streak gonads, a form of aplasia in which the ovary is replaced by functionless tissue. The accompanying hormonal failure also prevents the development of secondary sex characteristics in either sex, resulting in a sexually and infantile female appearance and infertility. So this basically goes to the heart of the science of Turner syndrome in the hormone and infertility aspect of it. A couple points that stuck out to me is the streak gonads. So it is not a guarantee and there is nothing to really tell um, even which ones can have that because I know women that have one normal ovary and one streak ovary. Uh, it It's basically just it never develops beyond a streak of tissue. The tissue doesn't turn into anything so that ovary doesn't develop. I, I, I hesitate to say it's guaranteed because like I've said over and over and over again, I am constantly surprised by the diversity within Turner syndrome. Constantly surprised by it and I'm constantly finding that you never know what's gonna happen. You don't know until you look in your specific case what you're up against. I have had the fertility testing as far as seeing what's going on. I have never found out what my ovaries actually look like as far as how developed they are. So I personally do not know. That would be super interesting interesting if I did. I already know what my fertility situation is though because like it says in the definition where underdeveloped and dysfunctioning gonads, my ovaries aren't doing anything whether there's something there or not. So the incredible difference that that makes is really what we see with Turner syndrome. Just in the way the body functions, where it's not developing properly, it's not hitting developmental marks when it needs to, and it's not able to perform some of the normal functions. So infertility, there's also just the sexual development where girls get boobs, 
Um, and even just something as simple as growing taller is hindered by this. The hormonal failure I thought was a super interesting part of that because that's really what it is. It all comes down to that underdevelopment means that whole system is bogged down by a hormone deficiency and then that peels off into everything else. So while I think this is super connected to Turner syndrome and that's why there's the also known as, it's also still, that's still a spectrum. There is still a spectrum that everybody falls on with how severe that deficiency and that underdevelopment and that hormonal failure is. So you still need to go to a doctor and say hey can you check my levels like what am I doing you know what's my body doing and just that for me was incredible I cannot tell you how much peace I got from knowing just what my body was doing it came at a point where I was really dreaming of the days of us starting our family and I was really trying to picture what that was gonna look like for us and my body was doing weird things it was changing and I needed to know what was going on. And so even if we we weren't going to do anything with it, um, I, I think it was really amazing information for me. And it was incredible to be at a point in my life and at an age that doctors were willing to talk to me about it because I was asking some questions when I was 16, 17, like, what are my odds? What does this look like? What are my options gonna be? And nobody wants to talk to a 16 or 17 year old about that. They they just don't. That's just not a conversation they wanna have. And so I didn't get any answers then. And I mean, functionally, that was fine. I didn't need to know then. But as I got older, becoming more of a woman, it was incredible to have knowledge of what my body was doing and to not have that looming over my head anymore. So that in a nutshell is what I have discovered about gonadal dysgenesis. I'm super, super excited for that information just to have that much more understanding of what's going on and kind of how it connects and what it is and all of that. So thank you for the comments and questions about it. I hope this answered some. If you want me to do another video on it or if you have any any other specific questions on it, leave them in the comments below and I'll either try to answer it in a comment or maybe do a whole video about it. Anything at all and anything you have that you would like to share about it that you found out would be awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with everybody. And if you are not already subscribed, click the screen and subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>